hi guys welcome back to my channel so it's been a long couple of months of several things happening but the one thing i was excited to happen was the fact that game of thrones came back and oh my god what can we say about game of thrones that we haven't said already like what can we say about game of thrones that people haven't dissected and opened up and done everything about it so game of thrones just ended and you know it's been eight seasons ten years of awesomeness that ended blah like there's a thing about game of thrones right the game of thrones ending has two scenarios these are how these are two school of thoughts about the game of thrones so the first people they're like you know if like someone has always been hitching up like yo i'm going to give you like the best sex of your life i'm going to give you the best sex of your life like you know what i'm down for this and then like you every and then it happens and you're like wait that's it i i, I shaved for this so that's how the first school of thoughts feel because if you like wait we waited 10 years for that and then this is the second school of thoughts they are the ones that are like you know they had a they had an orgasm it wasn't like a great orgasm it wasn't like the best mind-blowing thing they've ever experienced but it was okay but then when they turned to see the person that gave them that orgasm they're like ugh, why do we keep doing this to yourself and i'm part of the second school of thoughts honestly i'm going to, i'm just going to come right off the bat and say this i loved the ending no wait loved is such a strong word i like the ending I know for such a mid season a season the whole season eight was just blah so this is the thing it's been I started watching Game of Thrones I think after season four then I read the books and me being me once I read the books it means I'm diving full on into it so Game of Thrones just ended so the season seven season eight you know everybody felt like this is the end and you know if after how after six seasons of telling us these great stories filled with these complex characters we would think that getting to getting into the end everything would be about you know how these characters interact you know let some little theory some little prophecies let them pay off and so what we got were okay reactions certain fan service certain things that you know that what you're watching this was put in there just because they needed to put something there and then characters doing things that were just out of sorts so let me just go straight to season eight i'm not even going to tackle the first seven seasons let's, this is my thing about the f the last two seasons right i feel like they had enough material for 10 episodes for season seven and then season eight because you see trying to tell this much story with these many characters and tying this many plot holes you would need more you would need more time to do it that's why a lot of things feel contrived and like the biggest issue that a lot of people have is with Daenerys now mind you Daenerys is not like my favorite character in the whole book books show Daenerys has never been my favorite character you put like it because she's a nice girl and then she happened to be naked a couple of times and then she did a whole uh, breaker of chains and the whole Misa thing and the whole music and swirling thing so everybody's like oh they are in love with uh, Daenerys I never was Daenerys was never my favorite character she was just very annoying because everywhere she goes she has to have the titles and I was just over her at some point in time Oh, a lot of points in time i always knew she'd go batshit crazy because it was obvious like if you could read the tea leaves you would know that there was no way in which this show would end where she'll go out on skate and if i think in my last video on game of thrones i said she'll be the mad queen so you see i knew but the destiny like the journey to her being the mad queen is what a lot of people are saying that it doesn't make sense you see you're supposed to make it make sense that's everything so Daenerys for me I mean I don't care what happens to her character she died and Drogon burning the chair instead of Jon Snow did not make sense yet no that's the only part I'm like oh god these people just messed us up let me tell you about the people that I was very pissed about Varys Tyrion Littlefinger Peter Baelish these people were the, like the masterminders against like everything various and little finger like they had their pulse on everything and looking at what they did to various and little finger was appalling and even the actors that i don't know about 
the actor that played Peter Bailey, that's Aiden Gillian. I don't know if he's spoken about it, but I know Conleth Hill, the guy that plays Vice, has spoken out against the way his character was treated. And I stand with him because I feel like how, because Vice is, there's like, Vice is very menacing. Vice is always like, you know, up on the up and up trying to like do some things. And then all of a sudden, he goes out like that. Yes, and I get him. He, yes, he's supposed to die on a foreign land. Fire is supposed to kill him, but then he's supposed to have more, you know? That's why I feel like this season just paid dust to characters. A lot of character development was just done and they didn't even care. So that was terrible. I would say this, season eight of Game of Thrones was a lesson in Caribbean enthusiasm, okay? Anybody that had their enthusiasm up high, they just wrote it down. The Night King, let's talk about the Night King. Now, the Night King has always been like the big, 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 super bad. What happens with him? Like. I get he's killed by Aya, the showrunner said he had this three years ago, so obviously he's supposed to be killed by Aya, and then Melisandre does her prophecy, and then all of a sudden you're supposed to like, what, well, agree with it? Hmm. It's obvious that getting to the end, the showrunners wanted to like end this quickly and then move on to other projects or to do other things. Because, you see, when you watch the Inside of Thrones, when you watch the bonus featurettes right you get the sense that okay we are doing this course of that and that and that and then it's like they were not interested in like you know the things that made people adore game of thrones because the reason why i like game of thrones the reason why i adore game of thrones the fact that it's not just about like you know the spectacle and that's what the showrunners are focused on the showrunners like the spectacle because you know that's what wins you the big awards if you're able to do fire it will get you the awards if you're able to do you know big set pieces big music that will get you the awards but what drew me to game of thrones is the fact that these were characters these were complex characters these are characters that nobody's all good nobody's all bad but then everybody has the propensity to be good or bad or it's all wrapped up in one person unless you are Jon snow and you know nothing or you are ned stark and you are even ned stark right had his nuances but Jon snow was just annoying from beginning to end and i think Jon snow is I don't know, I think the showrunners made him that way, give us a lesson in not to put our trust in the hero trope, you know, like, oh, Jon Snow is going to be the hero because he's Aegon Targaryen, and nothing happened to the Aegon Targaryen. Like, I feel like some of the reveals that happened were the most useless reveals, ever. like useless in the sense that they were useless, but in the sense that there was no payoff. Okay, he's Aegon Targaryen. And then, you see, that's what I think. I think that the showrunners tried to take, you know, some storylines from the books merge it into the show make it into a thing make it work and then all the time it was just like it's not working iron Greyjoy. i don't understand why they brought iron Greyjoy into the show honestly they should have they could have just ended this whole eight seasons without iron Greyjoy because he did nothing because if you you see there's a thing for a lot of people that read the books when they watch the shows apart from seeing the fight scenes that look so magical on set right they're expecting to see certain certain characters and the way they are you know the nuances of the characters and iron Greyjoy, when i read in the books he scared me to death and i was like yo this person i want to know what he's about because he has this horn that can supposedly bring down the wall you know that wall that the ice dragon brought down so that's the thing Euron Greyjoy has that horn Euron Greyjoy is like this person that has no feelings whatsoever for so for them to make him seem like some lover boy Dario Noharis King's Landing edition was just so cringe worthy okay that was just off Golden Company oh my goodness I had so many theories about the Golden Company because you know the Golden Company was created by a black fire i have this theory that virus is a black fire so when the golden company comes they're going to do some keche they nothing the golden company they were like lannister army 2.0 harris strickland and his people nothing happened to them they just died i think the biggest thing i've been spoken about is bran bran is now the three-eyed raven for what like so what was the purpose of a three-eyed raven okay he knows history but that's the thing about the fear I gave is that they rarely die because Brendan Rivers, it took like the Night King to kill him. So if there's no Night King, 
Bran is never going to die. And I think that's what they're all failing to see. And that's the biggest plot hole because there's supposed to be something. So I saw this video, I, I probably put the video up here, whereby they show like what if Game of Thrones had ended with Bran, Bran was the Night King. So then the Night King they killed was just a Malone Night, like, you know, he had already put his essence in Bran. So then when they called Bran the broken, his eyes will turn blue. And then he's the new Night King. <gasps> that didn't happen the visual department and the music department deserve all the emmys all the golden globes they get okay i think my takeaway from this is that sometimes you should have writers apart from yourself like yes you are writers but sometimes you should have other people that are writers to write out the show because even if you're a showrunner that doesn't mean that you know how to write the characters because the writing on this season was atrocious how they ended game of thrones was terrible and for like a fan girl like me i was thinking that game of thrones will have this epic ending so that like the moment you mention game of thrones be like hey you haven't seen game of thrones but i like mentioned game of thrones be like you know season one and four is like the best and the way it ended it was eh no, you see the way people talk about Breaking Bad, like, yo, Breaking Bad is the best thing ever. The Wire, the Wire is the best thing ever. Sopranos, <sighs> Game of Thrones is supposed to be like that. Game of Thrones is supposed to be the one thing that you're like, yo, if you did not see eight seasons of Game of Thrones, you are missing. But after 73 episodes, what is going to be remembered of Game of Thrones is like, this was a big show that had a mid-ending. You know, and you see that the thing is that some of the actors in the show are very angry with how their characters ended. And I know they're never going to say anything about it, you know, because they're all supposed to project a happy family. Like, oh my God, we love this season so much. But no, they're lying. It's just, I don't know. I don't think I spent 10 years or like five, six years watching Game of Thrones for me to see how it ended. I don't know. I don't know why I thought, I honestly thought that everybody should have died. That's my thing. For me, I feel like if you are doing a show, everybody should die. When people die, they know that these are real life consequences, right? But one thing I will say is that the whole season, most of the performances were from the actors were just okay, apart from Sansa Stark, who have always been a Sansa stan. Sansa is amazing. Sansa's acting this season was good, but Peter Dinklage, Tyrion's emotions when he was looking for his brother and sister and when he finally saw their dead bodies that is like one of the best works this whole season and i'm sure he'll get another emmy for that work because that was incredible so i don't know game of thrones and I, I know by the time i post up this video it'll be the sunday and they're going to do the documentary so it's going to be a two-hour documentary hopefully that's my hope and i hope this comes to pass hopefully they bring out an alternate ending which would be dumb if they do an alternate ending because like wow after you've seen all this backlash now you give us an ending that we might appreciate but i feel like after the two during the two hour documentary they're going to take us through okay maybe this was supposed to be an alternate ending this was supposed to be an ending and this was supposed to happen i hope that happens but if that doesn't happen i mean hey dan and dave they are on to their star wars the other actors are on to their next project and we the fans we are left with dust that is what I can't agree on. Anyways, look, my name is Ifalabi. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on Game of Thrones Season 8. I know so many people didn't like it. Let me know specifically what didn't you like about it. Was it the action you didn't like? Was it the story development you didn't like? The character development? And also, Stephen King said that he liked this season. So if Stephen King says he liked this season, who are we to say we didn't like it? Anyways, let me know what you thought about the whole season. Let me know whether you liked it, disliked it. Let me know the past that just stuck to your core. Let me know the part that just made you so angry that you wanted to just throw your TV away. Please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell for any notifications of a new video. And I know that I haven't been posting as much. I've been a lazy person. And then life has also gotten in the way. Life and laziness is just such a weird mix. 